Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? So today I am out here in front of my local Walmart. Now, my plan is to go in there and take a printer right off the shelf, take it home, and then be able to use it for sublimation printing. So let's get into it. Okay, so we made it back here to the printers and we're in luck. It looks like they have the WF2850 for $89, but we've already done that one. So let's go ahead and grab this XP4105. It's only $59 and it has a chipless firmware available. So we should be good to go. Now to install a chipless firmware, we're gonna need a USB printer cable. So let's go ahead and grab one while we're here. So I got the printer back home and I'm going to go ahead and get everything together that I'm going to need for this setup. I'm going to need refill cartridges with syringes, sublimation ink, we're using Dynamite Gorilla sublimation ink here, a pair of gloves and our USB cable. Also you're going to need a Windows PC. You cannot use a Mac to install the chipless firmware, but once the firmware has been transferred and activated, you can use any device to print from it, be it a Mac, a PC, tablet, etc. Now before we get started with the printer, I'm going to fill and prime the refill cartridges. I'll start with the yellow cartridge so that it's easier for you to see the filling and priming process. First I'm going to remove this chip holder from the front of the refill cartridge since I won't be using it. Now I do this because leaving them on without a chip attached to the holder can damage the connectors inside of the printer. Next I'll take the syringe and place a needle on it. I'll place it into the ink bottle and drop a full syringe and place it to the side while I'll remove the fill hole plug and the vent hole plug. I'll next insert the syringe into the fill hole and empty the entire syringe into the cartridge. Once we fill the cartridge, I'll prime it by inserting the colored plug into the vent hole and then I'll remove the needle from the syringe and insert it firmly into the fill hole of the cartridge. Once the syringe is in place, I'll pull up on the plunger until I feel some resistance and then I'll let the plunger go. It'll fall on its own, forcing the ink into the center chamber and this will allow the ink to flow properly out of the cartridge and into the printer. Once the cartridge is primed, I'll drop some more ink and continue filling up the rest of the cartridge until it's topped off. I'll then use a colored plug and plug up our fill hole. The vent hole is gonna stay unplugged. If you plug the vent hole and the fill hole, it'll create a vacuum inside of the cartridge and the ink won't flow out. This can damage the print head, so you want to make sure you never print with both the plugs inserted. I'll fill up the rest of the cartridges and sit them off to the side. I'll toss the chip holders and the clear plugs into a parts drawer, and now we're ready to take the printer out of the box and remove the blue tape. Once it's out of the box and untaped, I'll plug in the power cord and connect it to my computer with the USB cable. Then we'll start the printer in firmware update mode by holding down the cancel button, the down arrow, the left arrow, finally hold down the power button until it displays firmware update mode. Good. Now we'll leave it on that screen and then head to the computer so we can download and set up the chipless firmware. So on the computer, the first thing I want to do is make sure that my antivirus and my firewall are disabled before I download and install the chipless firmware. Sometimes the antivirus will detect the activation program as a false positive and prevent you from installing the software. Now I'm running Norton Antivirus and to disable it, I'm just going to go to my system tray, right click on my antivirus icon, and disable the auto protect and the firewall. Once that's done, we can head over to inkchip.net to download the firmware and activation software. We'll click on soft at the top menu and scroll down until we find our model. We'll click download on firmware and do the same for the activation. I saved mine to the desktop, so I'm just going to go there and double click on the firmware first. It's in a RAR format, which is an archive file, so you'll need something like pzip or 7zip. I use pzip and I'll put a link in the description.
Once the folder is extracted, I'll open it up and double click on the inkchip.net firmware file. I'll click yes to the pop-up screen, click next and then agree, then next again, and then next one more time to get to step five of the firmware transfer. The bottom half should have a checkbox under the model name, USB under connection type, and unknown under status. Once that's confirmed, we'll go ahead and click on start to transfer the chipless firmware to the printer. The printer will display messages saying that it's installing the new ROM or firmware. Once it's done, it'll display finished, and on the screen, the power button light will flash rapidly. This process can take up to 10 minutes, so make sure you don't unplug or restart the printer until it's finished. Once it's done, you'll need to press the OK button to turn off the machine, then turn it on by simply pressing the power button. When it turns back on, it'll go into the setup by asking you to select your language. In my case, I'm going to select English. Next, it's going to ask to install the ink cartridges that came with the printer. Instead, we're going to insert the refill cartridges that we had set up earlier. We'll select installed, but we'll get a message saying that the ink cartridge is not installed correctly. That's fine, it just means we haven't activated our chipless firmware yet. To do so, we're going to head back to inkchip.net and click buy on the top menu. We'll select our model, which is in the XP series, and select 4105. We'll go ahead and add that to the cart, then select the shopping cart to go to the checkout screen. We'll enter our code GORILLA for an additional 10% off, then click proceed to checkout. Once the checkout process is complete, you'll get an email with your activation key. Once we get our activation key, we'll head back to the desktop and launch the activation program. You should see your printer in the drop down as it should still be connected to the printer with the USB cable. We'll click activate online and then enter the key that we received in the email. We'll click OK and receive a message telling us that the key has been written. I'll go ahead and copy that recovery code and paste it into a text document. That way if I ever lose the activation key, I can still reactivate my firmware in the event that I accidentally update my firmware. I'll then power cycle the printer by pressing the power button to turn it off, then pressing it again to turn it back on. The printer will ask for my language a second time, but this time after selecting English, it'll go right into the initialization with the refill cartridges. This is an indicator that the chipless firmware was installed correctly, and we can now finish the setup normally. Once the initialization is complete, it'll ask you if you want to do an adjustment. I'll usually bypass this and do the adjustment after the driver is installed. To install the driver, we're going to go to Epson.com and using the search bar, we'll type in our model number and click support. We'll go down to printer driver and select download. Now this is going to save on my desktop, so I'm going to go there and double click on the Epson driver and let it set up. I'm not going to use this as my default printer, so I'm going to select no here and then continue. Once it's finished, you'll see a printer icon at the bottom of your desktop. Right click on it and select printer settings and set up your printer profile. I like to use ASUB 120G paper, so I'm going to use my settings for that. I'll select legal for my document size and change my orientation to landscape. I'm going to change my paper type to premium presentation matte, quality high, and under the more options tab, I'll click mirror image and turn the bi-directional printing off. I'll go to my color correction area and select the custom radio button. I'll then click on advanced to make sure my color mode is set to Epson Vivid and select the slide bar radio button. I'll set my sign to 2, turn my magenta down to negative 20, and turn my yellows down to negative 15. The brightness, contrast, and saturation I'll leave alone for now. I'll then save these settings as a preset and now my settings are locked in. Next, I'll open up Photoshop and open up a four color purge file. I'll then head over to the printer and run three head cleaning, skipping the nozzle check after each one. Then I'll run three purge files. 
After the third purge file, I'll run a nozzle check just to see where I stand. If the nozzle check is bad, I'll wait about 30 minutes, run three more head cleanings and three more purge files and check it again. But if it's good to go like this one, we can go straight into printing. Now I have to make a diver down license plate, so this should be a good test for the new printer. All right, so there we go, a new sublimation printer that we paid under $60 for, brand new off the shelf. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and if you would, consider subscribing. It really helps out. Again, I'll put as much information as I can in the description, and until next time, guys, good luck and good night.